Betwabu, beautiful people. Betwabu, Betwabu, top of the day. It is Friday, Friday, the first Friday of the year. It is January the 3rd, 2020. We are on day 36 of year two. We're reading today Leviticus 16, 17, and 18. We got to get into this because apparently the people was doing it. So, they may not have been doing it just yet or they could have been, but you who had to address it because it was definitely being done in Egypt. And they were there, so they were probably taking um, part in some of these practices. May not have been all, a great deal of them maybe, but he had to address it step by step. So let's get started with Leviticus chapter 16. Today we're talking about um, how we're not to eat blood and forbidden sexual practices. Like some of these sexual practices that he bring out, it's like, it will seem like common sense. But what's crazy is... They're doing some of this nastiness today still. Like, and I'm like, like, okay, just listen, listen. Leviticus chapter 16. And Yahuwah spake unto Massa after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before Yahuwah and died. Remember, they offered strange fire to figure, hey, we priests, we've been ordained as priests, we're going on over here and get a sense of, you know, off some incense, strange fire before Yahuwah, boom, dead. Congregation had to carry out. No, without the congregation of the two priests, let be careful. At least you follow them in death. Okay. But those two sons. And Yahuwah said unto Master, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times in the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. Let me bring out something. You know the mercy seat is um, simply the covering or the top of the ark. That's what the mercy seat is. I'm not exactly sure why it, it it's just the top of the ark. I mean, people know it as the mercy, so we know what we're talking about. It's simply the lid. It's the lid to the ark of the covenant. And Yahuwah said unto Master, speak, in, speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark that he died not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. And thus thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and shall be girded with the linen girdle, and with the linen metri shall he be attired. These are holy garments, therefore shall he be Therefore shall he wash his flesh in the water, and so put them on. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Yisolili, two hairy goats. It says kids, but remember we talked about this the other day. It's full-haired goats. When you see kid of goats, it's the full-haired goats. Goats that are completely full of hair. Not the naked goats, but the goats full of hair. They got full coats of hair. Take two hairy goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering and Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and make an atonement for himself and for his house and he shall take the two hairy goats and present them before Yahuwah at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two hairy goats one lot for Yahuwah and the other lot for the scapegoat and Aaron shall bring the goat upon which Yahuwah's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before Yahuwah to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Okay, now some places, um, it's weird and I'm not sure why. They offer one for Yahuwah, and they also offer one in other versions of the Bible. It says Azazel. You know, we know Azazel was one of the uh, fallen angels who, remember when um, in the beginning it said, uh, well, mm, thinking about something. It's tying into something else that we don't find in here. And a lot of people don't question it. 
um, but you will find it in the book of Enoch. So that's that's why I pause for a second because you won't find that in here. All right, so let me I'll leave that alone for now. I'll keep reading. And verse 11, and Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before Yahuwah, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before Yahuwah, and that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat, which is upon the testimony that he died not. And he shall take the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat. And before the mercy seat and he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Yisraeli and because of their transgressions and all their sins and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanliness and there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Yisraeli. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before Yahuwah and make an atonement for it and shall take the blood of the bullock and the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanliness of the children of Yisraeli. Remember, Yisraeli is Israel or Yisrael, depending on what um, dialect of the Bantu language, you know. And when he hath made an end of reconciliation the hope of the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Yisraeli and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto the land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. And Aaron shall come unto the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments, which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh and water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. And he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp. And the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung. And he that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or of a stranger that sojourneth among you. It doesn't say it right here, but this is the day of atonement. The tenth day of the seventh month, it comes between trumpets and Sukkot, or Sukkot is also called tabernacles, feast of booths, um, feast of tents. But that's what this is, is the day of atonement. I'll read it again. And this, is, and this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, that ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that ye may be clean from all your sins before you who are. It shall be a, it shall be a Sabbath day of rest unto you and ye shall afflict your souls by statute forever. And a lot of times we hear that, oh, it's a fast day. It's not necessarily a fast day. 
we we know that it's a Sabbath day. It's a day of no working. I'm not sure where they got that from because when you look into that, nowhere can you find that it's a fast day that you to put food away from you. What we did find out is that this is a day that you are to sit back. It's literally, it's a day of atonement, but it's literally a day of repentance. You know, you everything that blank, that brings you pleasure, you are to put it away from you and and literally reflect on your life and repent and make amends for things that you have done that you have not previously done. That's what the Day of Atonement is about. Verse 32, And the priest whom he shall anoint, whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead, shall make the atonement and shall put on linen, the linen clothes, even the holy garments. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar. And he shall make an atonement for the priest and for the people of the congregation. And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you to make an atonement for the children of Esau for all their sins once a year. And he did as Yahuwah commanded Massa. All right, y'all. These last two chapters is getting into what our title is talking about today. All right. Leviticus chapter 17. And Yahuwah spake unto Master, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons and unto all the children of Yisraeli, and say unto them, This is a thing which Yahuwah hath commanded, saying, Whatsoever man, what, I'm sorry, what man soever there be of the house of Yisraeli that killeth an ox or lamb or goat in the camp or that killeth or killeth it out of the camp, and bring it, it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer an offering unto Yahuwah before the tabernacle of Yahuwah. Blood shall be imputed unto that man. He has shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. To the end that the children of Yisraeli may bring their sacrifices, which they offer in an open field, even that they may bring them unto Yahuwah, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priests, and offer them for peace offerings unto Yahuwah. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of Yahuwah at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and burn the fat for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a whoring. Remember, in Egypt, they were worshiping all kinds of deities and gods and devils and stuff. So he said, this is, tell them this is how they are to do this. If they're going to do this, this is how they are to do it. I read seven again. They shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statue forever unto them throughout their generations. And thou shalt say unto them, Whatsoever man there be of the house of Yisraeli, or of the strangers which sojourn among you, that offer their burnt offering or sacrifice, and bring it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, to offer it unto Yahuwah, even that man shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Yisraeli, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any man of blood, I will set my face against that soul that eateth blood and will cut him off from among his people. And we know people still doing it. I'm, well, yeah. Some of you whose people is doing it. They are. I've seen it. It's disgusting. But a lot of other nations do it. You can look on some of the, the reality TV channels and stuff that come on and some of the travel channels and the places they go to eat to eat different cuisines and nastiness food that they i mean they're making blood soup and blood cakes and adding seasoning to it like this chicken noodle soup i'm like what are y'all what are, this no y'all not gonna eat that are you i'm like mm, uh, i want to throw up like it's disgusting they literally and it's like a cuisine and stuff and i'm like this is no this is no cuisine cuisine this is disgusting like my daughter said this is disgusting <laughs> no she do like this mm -mm, mm -mm, disgusting <laughs> Verse 11. I'll I read 10 again, just in case. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Yisraeli, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. 
for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Therefore I said unto the children of Yisolili, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Yisolili, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood and cover it with dust. For it is the life of the flesh, the blood of it for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Yisolili, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of the flesh is in the blood thereof. Whoever eateth it shall be cut off. And every soul that eateth that which dieth of itself, or that which was torn with bees, whether it be one of your own country, or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. Then he shall be clean. But if he wash them not, nor bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his iniquity. All right, last chapter for today, y'all. Leviticus chapter 18. It's pretty short. And Yahuwah spake unto Master, saying, Speak unto the children of Yisraelili, and say unto them, I am Yahuwah, your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, ye shall not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, ye shall not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. He said, remember, all that crap y'all seen in Egypt, don't do it. Even the land I'm bringing you into, when you see them doing this foolishness or similar foolishness, don't do it. Live among them how I'm teaching you to live, that the blessing may continue to be all your life. Listen, he's going to lay it out. I read that again. Verse 3, chapter 18 of Leviticus. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, ye shall not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, ye shall not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am Yahuwah, your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am Yahuwah. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to, co to uncover their nakedness. I am Yahuwah, the nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother, thou shalt not uncover. She is thy mother, and thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. And the nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. Now this brings up some questions which causes for deeper research because in other places where it's worded, it would seem like some incest has gone on. Mm, that doesn't quite sit right with me simply because of everything that's being laid out here and how you who is saying it and knowing that they were following um, Torah even before it was written. See, before there was like, a, it seemed as if there was an unwritten law that was being followed that they all understood. You can even hear, um, and I brought this up before, think about Joseph. Remember, this was before they even went into Egypt. Jo well, no, Joseph was already in Egypt, but he was um, in Pharaoh's house. He was a master within Pharaoh's house. And remember, his wife tried to come on to him, and he told her, he said, I cannot do this thing which is against Yahuwah. And what was that? He was saying he cannot commit adultery. He said that it's an abominable thing. We cannot do those type of things. That clearly is in the instructions that Yahuwah gave them when they came out of Egypt. But Joseph also knew that. Check this out. Joseph knew that, although he had been separated from his family, meaning before he was separated from his father, um, Isaac had had to have taught him that for him to know and to still be following that and live an upright life before you who all this time he had been stolen had been living as a slave and then as a master in Pharaoh's house there was a law and he understood it and he lived by it. a lot of people you hear this 
And I used to think the same thing until I started reading. I was like, that is not true. That is, we can clearly see something else was happening here. But a lot of people say, oh, the law wasn't given until, you know, after they came out of Egypt. That's not so. It was reissued after they came out of Egypt because they had been in bondage 200 plus something years and they were living according to the way of the heathen of the Egyptians and what they were doing. And it was Yahuwah had to teach them. Well, this was a whole nother generation. Some of them may have known. Maybe some teachings were passed down. But for the newer clan that came out of them during this time, because they multiplied like, like, like no other like you know how black people multiply they were black people they were multiplying you know so you who had to reach teach them a first just in case there were some things that slipped through the cracks and he told mass he said listen we need to reissue this and he said you go down here and you teach the people this you know so but he said look go down and let them know i'm giving this ask them do they agree to the terms and they say yes and they the, the, the our ancestors agreed to it they say yes we were here and we will do all that Yahuwah has said. They agreed to his terms, you know, after he, well, he wrote them and he sent Moses down and they, anyway, they agreed to the terms and they said they would obey the covenant, you know, so they would continue to be blessed. Okay. So they, they, they knew they couldn't, and I said all that because they knew incest was forbidding it was forbidden you have some people oh but this didn't happen i'm telling you there were things that were not canonized that's not a part of this book that's why i stopped before because some people they haven't read through so they don't know and some people kind of mm, don't you know they, they're scared to read the apocrypha apocrypha simply means hidden you know um but they some bibles have it like my sephir that i have under here and not just sephir it's other bibles that have the apocrypha and you can buy the apocrypha by itself. Um, but it brings a lot more clarity to the, some of the things that we read in here. But do you need those? No, you don't because there's enough truth in here to save your soul. It really is, you know. But if you're a, a researcher like me and somebody that loves to read, there's nothing against reading the other books and reading other history because it's history that just wasn't shared with this these books of history all right verse 10 the nakedness of thy son's daughter or of thy daughter's daughter even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover for theirs is thine own nakedness the nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter begotten of thy father she is thy sister thou shalt not uncover her nakedness thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister she is thy father's nearest, thy father's near kinswoman. She your aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. She is your aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt, and he your uncle. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife, and thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Remember, fathers had two kinds of nakedness. Their own nakedness and their wives' nakedness belong to them. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shall thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness besides the other in her lifetime. Wait. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her in her lifetime. Also thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanliness. Meaning, when we talked about this yesterday, when she on her cycle, you do not approach her. We know some people tried. Our people tried. Other nations tried. We know. You get cervical cancer that way, you better stop it. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Thou shalt not, not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. I am Yahuwah. They were sacrificing. The pass through the fire means sacrificing. 
their children. They were sacrificing their children, innocent blood, until the God Molech. Yahuwah said, this is an abominable thing. He said, do not offer human sacrifices. I do not accept them. It's an abominable thing. It is a forbidden thing. Do not do this. This is something that we must remember, okay? We must remember this because this is a narrative that's being pushed in the church. And Yahuwah said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And because we don't know how Yahuwah operates and we don't know what he has said, when we get to a certain point, if if we don't understand how Yahuwah operates and what he said was forbidden, and what was good, we're going to be led astray. And we're going to be made to think that something is good that is not when he has forbidden it. So even when you get to those things, because you're not familiar with his voice, it won't even be red flags going off in you. Like, when I began to familiarize myself with the actual words of Yahuwah, like you get to the New Testament, you don't really hear it. Yahuwah doesn't speak. He doesn't speak. All you hear is the apostles and um that he they give him a one liner in there when they was about to uh baptize or I think they after they baptized j c and he said, "This is my son in whom I am well pleased, but if you read even that right there, it would throw it would cause some red flags to go off right now I'm gonna leave that right there, okay." We're not going to get into that on this particular one, but I'm going to leave that right there. But you have to understand your whore's voice so you can pick through. Um, you can clearly decipher the leaven in the loaf, right? You can decipher truth from error. You can pick out things that were added, and you will know it's something that was removed because something doesn't quite make sense. And it'll cause you to go back and check, and it'll cause a bunch of questions to cause to to start arising within you. So I'm just saying, really familiarize yourself with the voice of Yahuwah. That's why we're reading through the Old Testament because most of our people don't do it. The only time we go to the Old Testament is if we're pulling some of them famous scriptures and using them to pair them with something in the New Testament, which 100% of the time has been taken out of context. Because if that Old Testament scripture that you, if you read it in context and maybe go back a couple chapters and see, you see, wait a minute, this was fulfilled right here. Why is it? It'll cause some questions to start arising within you. And rightfully, it should. It's to wake you up. Pay attention, people. Okay. Verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Neither shalt thy... Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. He's talking to the man. Like, homosexuality is an abomination. Men shall not lie with men. Women shall not lie with women. It is an abomination for you who is people. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. You are not to have sex with animals. It's a shame. And I'm just flabbergasted every time I read. I'm like, he had to call this out. Like, you don't know the mate that was made for you, like woman, man and woman. They sleep with man and woman. Man with a woman, a woman with a man. Not a man with a cow and a woman with a horse or whatever. I even seen some stuff with an alligator. Dude got his neck snapped and you darn well should have. It's a freaking alligator. What caused you? I mean, what? How did you penetrate in the skin? I'm just, whew, the people is crazy. They have completely gone astray all right verse 24 defile ye not yourselves in any of these things for in all these things the nations are defiled which i cast out before you and the land is defiled therefore i do visit the iniquity thereof upon it and the land itself vomited out her inhabitants it said the land is vomiting out the inhabitants that's doing these wicked things like that land is going to eat you up whether the animals come eat you up kill you some weather catastrophe takes you out natural selection happens to take your breath from you or whatever it, the land is going to vomit out all the wickedness that is committed upon her 
Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments. Ye shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that shall join among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. That the land spew you not out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. And whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which ye were committed before you, which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am Yahuwah, your God. Let me tell you something. That's an amazing occurrence that the land knows how to pick and choose, and nature knows how to pick and choose those who are committing wickedness in her place, and she comes after you like. I sit back and I observe. Remember I told you I observe things. I observe who dies. I really do. And I begin to look at their life. I'm not saying all people, but I'm just saying there are some unjust killings and deaths that have happened in the land. And that too will come after you sooner or later. The land is going to vomit you out if you continue committing wickedness in her. So... Consider your ways, people. Consider your ways. Yahuwah's words are good all day long. And if you don't know them, you perish. Yahuwah said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Not lack of power, but lack of knowledge. The knowledge of Yahuwah gives you life. It leads unto life. It tends unto life. It keeps you alive. You get to keep your breath. Everybody else, they turning in that air. Yeah, so... Don't be one of them that you got to go turn in your L. Yep, yep, time up. Mm-hmm. So, with that being said, beautiful people, that was our reading for today. It is Friday, January the 3rd, 2020, day 36 of year two. We read Leviticus 16, 17, and 18. We are preparing for the Sabbath, the day of rest. So, prepare well, people. Get you some rest. Y'all may have two days of rest because you might be off Sunday. So, enjoy the couple days of rest that you may have, but we will not be doing a video tomorrow as we don't do video live videos on the sabbath to practice the principle of resting even with our videos you got six days to work and one day to rest set that aside it is to be set apart from all other days we rest on this day so since this is a uh oh i ain't gonna say a work because i truly enjoy doing it granted i have my mom's like oh my gosh why did i commit to do it no but i truly do love doing it's like what else would i do you know so i do something to help y'all's people to help wake them up you know so i do i, I truly enjoy I, I love reading first of all and you know to read to those that i mean y'all can read but i'm just saying sometimes you just want to listen to somebody else read to you it's a good thing you know um but with that being said y'all prepare when the sun go down rest them bones go to sleep take a nap sleep all day if you need to so with that being said beautiful people i will see you bright and early sunday morning 7 a.m like always so may you who will bless us and keep us may you who will make his face to shine upon us and lift his countenance upon us and be gracious unto us in our households and may he give us his salama or his peace and may he continue to keep us as we keep his commands all right y'all i love you and i will see you sunday morning Peace.